All right, so one of the darkest questions a lot of people have often asked was, you know, who's Cubone's real mother? And so I think I might have figured it out finally. And the answer is kind of, it's not really too shocking, but at the same time, though, I kind of wasn't expecting it to be kind of like this difficult to really figure out. Because at one point, it's like, you know, you, you think it's Marowak, but then you start thinking it's Kangaskhan. But then here comes the answer. It's like, it's actually both, if you think about it. And, and, and I'll explain. So... If you think about it, Kangaskhan, Cubone, Marowak were all originally the same Pokemon. And in a way, they still are because they're like kangaroos, boxing kangaroos. Even though they never hop and you never see like Marowak carrying Cubone for the most part. But they're usually right around each other. And here's something else to think about though. You know, if, if they're all different species, well... Like, not different species, like, all together, but, like, you know, they're, like, one in the same, sort of. And at one point, they had recycled evolutions that would actually be who it was. Um, I think another reason they probably stuck with Kangaskhan is because they probably liked the concept that Kangaskhan didn't have the skull on its head. So you can kind of see what Kangaskhan looked like originally, even though Kangaskhan looks completely different compared to, like, that of a Marowak. But what does Marowak look like without the skull fused into its head? It's always a good question. Cubone, you know, you can kind of see it's like an adult, you know, it's just a a baby, a baby Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan, obviously, and then you obviously have the baby that's with Kangaskhan. So, that's actually more adorable when you think about it. But I think, and I and, and here's something else to think about. I, I do think that we can prove that Kangaskhan had two, two mothers, baby Kangaskhan, because... If you think about it, on one hand, you have the one evolution that we've been so sought to believe that, you know, every Q-bone is born through, like, a Marowak. Q-bones and Kangaskhan's breed. Kangaskhan's obviously being female only. I think they can breed with dittos, too, if I remember correctly. There's just some things in the games you got to kind of look past. Like, you know, every time you lay an egg, hatch an egg, it's like there's a Kangaskhan with a baby already in it. <laughs> so it kind of, like, you know, because it, it always goes by the lowest tier evolution in that class. And then they hatch that egg. But well, basically, Kangaskhan's supposed to be Kangaskhan, and its baby form would actually be, it would grow up to be a, an adult Kangaskhan. But at the same time, though, that Kangaskhan could very well have had another mother, too, you know? So, I think it makes a lot of sense that, because what's weird is, if you think about it, Marowaks can also lay eggs, too. So, technically speaking, they are, in fact, or, you know, they can have children. Because they are mammals, I think. Yeah, because it's, it's a kangaroo. Um, it would make sense that they, like, like a Cubone's mother could be, could also come from, you know, Marowak. Because, again, you have you have Cubones that can be male and female. You have Marowaks that can be male and female. You have Kangaskhans that are only female. And the baby itself can be male or female, obviously. So, and and, and here's something else to think about. If you look at the later generations, they kind of redesigned um, the baby Kangaskhan, and it looks a little bit different. So if Nintendo was thinking, well, Game Freak at the time was thinking they made a different kind of Kangaskhan, then that proves that Kangaskhan could actually grow up to be an adult Kangaskhan. So it can have a direct evolution. Even though we don't see it in the games, like, for example, like, you know, in, like, every time you see, like, a mega evolution of a Kangaskhan, you have, like, the mother itself and the baby fighting at the same time. So it's actually pretty interesting how they came to that conclusion. Not to mention, um, Cubone could have been partially raised by Kangaskhan, too. And then later on, the Kangaskhan eventually, but its real mother could have been Marowak. You know, I, I think it would make more sense that, I mean, even though, you know, Cubones are a little bit different than Marowaks, but if you think about it, like, they all kind of, like, they have their own clans, sort of. Um, like, Marowaks, like, even though it's kind of like, they do dark rituals where, like, they go to graveyards and they find bones and everything and they use them. You know, but they gather with each other. So, they're hunt. They're not just lone wolves for the most part, you know. They they do have, like, their moments where they do gather with other Pokemon in that trilogy. What kind of rituals they perform, that's a whole different story. But they they do get together somehow. They work together. 
Kangaskhan kind of the same thing, even though it might be a little bit harder because Kangaskhan's like kind of on its own for the most part. It's got its child, and it might even have more than one child with it. So, who knows, right? Heck, I mean, even in the anime, you had the the boomerang kid, you had, or the Kangaskhan kid. You had there was that there was another Kangaskhan that said that it was raising its its baby too, and it also had its uh, what was it? It also had a. Uh, the uh the pichu but the pichu got big and then and they eventually let go of it so they couldn't carry it with it anymore so but it's interesting to think though how that how that came to be so like you know and, and not only that but it's like you know if if and, and what about the time there could be times where like you know maybe even like if you go to the other side of it where like cubones like a different a different Kangaskhan, but like, you know, it's raised by a Marowak, let's say. Like, I mean, it, it would be interesting because like, you know, you could have like a Cubone that's born from an egg by a Marowak or a, and then let's just say that those Pokemon, you know, after they get done mating, you know, and the, 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 they lay their child, children, because again, mammals, they very well like Cubone could have just been a different kind of Kangaskhan, but it didn't. But it didn't wear its mother's skull though, because it was still alive at the time. And even though we don't see that in the game, but it's like always implying like it's after. You know, like the Cubones we find, they're not. They're not dead, but their mother might be dead. So those Cubones are the, the their mother was a Marowak, but then like the Kangaskhan we see could have its own baby, therefore its parents. So it's like, you know, for the longest time, it's like we were we were confused like on how all this worked, but it's like when you look at it from a certain perspective in time, it actually makes a lot of sense. So I think Cubone and Kangaskhan are not only related because they have the same appearance because what's even weirder is if you take cubone and you stop trying to focus on like what its head looks like because you know it never shows what its face is you know just look at the rest of its body um it's got a brown it's got the you know it's it's fur is all brown it's all if, if it if it's even fur it has um and then it's got its belly is kind of filled in with that oval um kind of like how charmander and charmeleon have like their bellies but it, they're different though you know but hear me out though so Instead of comparing kangaroos to salamand salamanders and lizards. Um, I think that's what Charmander is, isn't it? A salamander? Basic, well, a flame lizard, basically. But anyways. So, we have Kangaskhan and we have Cubone. But the, the Cubone is still brown. And its belly in the middle is kind of like a lighter sort of color. So, if we're to believe that... Then we can believe that all the uh, the Pokemon are sort of connected somehow. You know, not only are they the same species, but they also were raised under different circumstances. And therefore, they're just another species that are connected somehow. But where you find Cubones and where you find Mothers. Because Cubone, for the most part, you can only find it in caves. But mostly the Pokemon Tower. Now, specifically, like, the very last floor, because that's, like, where its mother died recently. So all the Cubones you're finding are probably, coincidentally, not the same Cubone, but that would be where you'd find it, though. Um, most likely, at least. So, there's that. So, yeah, you have Kangaskhan, had its own babies, and they would still breed with Marowax. Male Marowax, probably. And probably male, I mean, even though there is no such thing as a male Kangaskhan, but I mean, a ditto could technically be a male Kangaskhan, however that would work, but, you know, because they can do that. You know, you can get baby Kang, I, I do believe Kangaskhan can breed uh, with dittos. It's been a while since I've tried that, but I do think that would make sense. Not to mention, you know, Kangaskhan had to have gotten its baby from somewhere, so... If it is a female or it adopts, I mean, that Kangaskhan had to have came from somewhere. So, I wouldn't be surprised. And, and again, Kangaskhans are adults, so they should be able to reproduce somehow. So, I do believe that, if you think about it, it, it does make sense that Kangaskhan can lay eggs or have children. Marowaks can have children, too. And so, it just goes to show you that not only are... Cubones and Kangaskhan's connected, but at the same time, though, 
uh, Kangaskhan was a scrapped evolution of Cubone originally. But it just threw, but after they took out the skull appearance and then they moved it over to a different evolution, it just threw a lot of people off over the years because a lot of people were trying to think, hey, you know, are these Pokemon connected? But like, we don't really know, you know. More so to the point as well, like, you know, even if Cubone, like, you could take Cubone's, like, back appearance, it's got those little spikes that run down it, sort of. And that's kind of what the baby Kangaskhan has, too. Now, keep in mind, Kangaskhan, the stories could be different. I would like to know um, where and I like how much older the baby Kangaskhan is compared to the Cubone, because I would really, and vice versa, like, because if that is true... Maybe at one point, even Kangaskhan himself could have had two, two children. Maybe one goes off to be a Cubone somehow, and the other one's... Because it's, it's, it's interesting, because you start thinking about, like, other possibilities. Is it possible that Cubone could have been, at one point, could have been adopted by a Kangaskhan as well, instead of just being directly raised by a Marowak? Because it, it is interesting to think about, you know? Marowak is... And I, I don't believe, and I'll, and I'll say this for a record, I, I don't think, like, when they were translating the scripts for Pokemon, because the people that wrote the scripts of the games were different than the people that translated it. Like, every time you read, like, where it says, like, it's mother, you know, Cubone will never see its mother again. I don't think that's true. I, I do think there is an afterlife in the Pokemon series, because, again, you know, like, Arcsaris, uh, Giratina, Dialga, Palkia, they're all, like, gods of some kind. Like, I, I think you, you could say, like, all legendary Pokemon, like, what the powers they have are technically sort of gods, because they're guardians, basically. Like, think of, like, Mystery Dungeons, for example. That's exactly one of the major points they capitalize on. There's, like, this, there's crises in the world, nature in this case, the world's very chaotic, but there's people in there that, and there's guardians that balance it out, sort of, like, guardians of the galaxy, for example. And so, but we got Pokemon stance on the whole thing, you know, so it's interesting to think how they did that. But anyways, yeah, I mean, one way or another, something has to make sense because, I mean, it is in this series. And I do think, I, I'll be honest with you, I mean, even even me growing up, I've always heard a lot of people say maybe Game Freak really didn't know what they were doing. But if you really think about it, I think they did. I, I do think there's a lot of things that they wrote into the series somehow. And maybe a lot of people to this day still don't realize it. You know, that's how clever the writing can sort of be if you really look at it from a, a literature perspective. I just think it's really cool how they managed to come up with this. Because, again, you know, Kangaskhan was always one of my favorite Pokemon. And then you had Cubone, who, like, you know, everybody always wanted to know, like, who the hell was Cubone? Because, again, you know, like, once you hit Lavender Town, for example, you know, it just was very memorable. It was just kind of out of place for a Pokemon. Like, you, you just didn't see it coming. Like, they always talk about how Pokemon fainted, and then all of a sudden, like, there are some dark history with Pokemon. And they're just you just sit there and you look at that, and you're like, like, how did that get in there, you know? What town, and I'm still trying to find it, what town is Lavender Town based on? It's somewhere in the jo Johto region, between the Johto and Kano. It's, it's in Kano, obviously, but um, but somewhere in Kano, though. I have no idea where. I have to figure that out still. But anyways, um, I will figure that out, and that will be another video. I'm trying to still find it, but one of these days I will find it, though. Oh, oh by the way, uh, if, you, if you've never seen it before, there's Lavender Fields in Japan, and they're very beautiful. You should really look at them on Google Images if you've never seen them before. I think it's very breathtaking, it really is. Um, so again, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Um, we already hit 100, we already hit 1,160 subs, and that's awesome. I can't wait to hit even more. Um, if you guys have any requests, please let me know. Uh, we'll definitely take them. But uh, until then, uh, yeah, just look forward to, like, more Pokemon videos. Uh, you're going to be seeing me uploading, like, a lot of Pokemon, like, uh, walkthroughs, uh, including ROM hacks, because I'm going to start getting into those. But uh, I think Fire, I think Pokemon Crystal is going to be next, including the Japanese version. I think I'm going to start with the Japanese version. I, I do want to do the international versions first, because... Um, or not international, I said, no, the Japanese versions first, because, like, we've played them in English all these years, but I want to show you, like, all the Japanese lettering and all that, all the symbols and all that, so it, it just seems pretty cool. Even though there's people that's probably already done it, obviously, because Pokemon's huge worldwide, so I wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, take it easy, guys.